Dubai, with its skyscrapers and extravagant shopping malls, is the picture of a city that defies the imagination. Everything there is grandiose, luxurious, and meticulously designed to impress the world. But this glamorous city, which many see as the capital of the future, has a side that few know about. A hidden side where gold crumbles into dust and glamour gives way to a harsh and suffocating reality. That place is called Sonapur. For most visitors, it's just an unknown name, a spot off the tourist map. But for thousands of migrant workers, Sonapur is the very definition of survival. Today, Belo Mundo will take you to see this visceral contrast between two Dubais, one where luxury shines brightly and another where the struggle for the basics is a constant. Dubai is located on the southeast coast of the Persian Gulf, right in the heart of the Arabian Desert, a strategic position that easily connects it to the Middle East, Europe, Asia, and Africa. It is part of the United Arab Emirates, a federation of seven emirates, and Dubai is just one of them. That surprises a lot of people, doesn't it? In addition to Dubai, the United Arab Emirates includes Abu Dhabi, Fujairah, Ras Al Khaimah, Sharjah, Umm Al Quwain, and Ajman. And although Dubai is famous, the country's capital is the city of Abu Dhabi, which bears the same name as the Emirate. Dubai is an impressive city, built in one of the most extreme climates on the planet. Surrounded by vast sand dunes and bathed by the Persian Gulf, it stands out for its contrasts. On the one hand, the glitter of skyscrapers and vibrant lights. On the other, the endless stretches of desert sand. And although it all looks like sand and sun, Dubai surprises with its diversity of landscapes. This city, which today is synonymous with wealth and modernity, began quite differently. At the beginning of the 20th century, Dubai was a simple fishing village. The local port made the region grow, boosting maritime trade and pearl cultivation, and turned Dubai into an important trading center in the Arab world. But the real boom came in 1966, with the discovery of oil in the Fateh field, about 120 kilometers east of the city. The wealth brought by oil was just the beginning. Dubai didn't sit back. Over time, the city diversified its economy, which today includes commerce, finance, services, tourism, and much more. The result of all this effort is a city that no longer depends exclusively on oil and that reinvents itself every day. However, despite spending tons of money on transforming the city, these investments have been directed towards visual changes, while structural issues have been left aside. In fact, a clear example of this that has become world famous is the queue of pit trucks used to remove the sewage produced by the city. Although the images are old and much of the problem has already been solved, they serve to show that the government preferred to build the big buildings first and only then think about building the necessary infrastructure for them. Today, even if less frequently, Dubai still resorts to the tanker system, as the city's sewage system is not due to be completed until 2025. With its growth, Dubai has become a constant fixture in the world's top rankings, but many areas that were once fertile have been used for the construction of buildings and infrastructure. And guess what? The reduction in agricultural land is also being accelerated by desertification. In just 16 years between 2002 and 2018, Dubai lost 56% of its arable land, in other words, more than half. And this reduction was happening at the same time as the demand for food and other natural resources, such as water, was increasing. It's worth remembering that between 2004 and 2019, the city tripled its population. From 1 million to the current 3 million and 300,000 inhabitants. In short, a series of misguided and poorly planned decisions. 
These factors combined increased the need to increase food production, and the country began to need imports to supply the population, in an attempt to be as self-sufficient as possible. What about some curious figures? As we've just mentioned, Dubai currently has a population of over 3 million inhabitants, and believe it or not, almost 90% of them are foreigners. It's a city of mixed cultures, where Islam is the predominant religion and luxury is the calling card. Today, Dubai is home to some of the world's greatest architectural icons. From the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building on the planet, to the artificial palm-shaped islands, the city is a showcase of modernity and opulence. Tourism is a fundamental economic pillar, and each new building seems to shout out, Welcome to the future! Now that we have the geographical and cultural context, let's get into what really matters. The Dubai you don't see in the tourist guides. And you know that expression from luxury to trash? It makes total sense here. Imagine crossing an invisible line. On one side are Dubai's five-star hotels, artificial beaches, and luxurious restaurants where tourists bask under the sun. On the other, an area that seems to exist in a parallel universe where glamour gives way to the daily struggle for survival. And that place is called Sonapur, an accommodation that looks more like a prison. This is where immigrant workers live, those who build the Dubai of their dreams, but who inhabit a reality far removed from luxury and ostentation. Instead of the glitter of social media, Sonapur is a place of cramped shacks where everything is shared, from the rooms to the weight of an exhausting routine. After all, for everything to shine, someone has to pay the price, right? Literally, luxury versus trash. To understand how this division became so extreme, we need to go back in time a little. Back in the 1960s, Dubai was just a British protectorate, a fishing and trading village. It was a place where camel herders crossed the desert and life was modest. Until suddenly everything changed. Oil was discovered, transforming this village into one of the richest regions on the planet. The town was turned upside down and, like a modern gold rush, began to attract people from all over the world in search of opportunities. It was then that campaigns began to bring in workers from other countries. Today, around 85% of Dubai's population is made up of foreigners. They come from all over, South Asia, the Middle East, Europe, and even America. This melting pot of culture seems to make the city a unique place where there is room for everyone, right? And in a way, there really is room for everyone. But of course, some stay at the top, while others barely manage to stay at the bottom. In Sonapur, the life of the workers is a painful contrast to the luxury of the center. There, the houses are makeshift shacks, unfinished without doors or windows, where the heat is almost unbearable. In a city where temperatures reach 50 degrees, ventilation is minimal and cooling systems are a distant privilege. But then, why do these people accept living in these conditions? The answer is far more complex than you might think. Well, it's worth remembering that people who leave their respective countries are in search of better conditions, so many of these workers hope that with the money they receive, they will be able to support their families' studies and provide better living conditions for their families back home. Right? Well, unfortunately, there is a kind of mafia here. There are many companies that go to these countries, such as India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and the Philippines, to hire workers and bring them here under the promise that they will have housing, food, transportation, everything they need, even medical insurance. But the reality is quite different. When these workers land in Dubai, they realize that the promises are just empty words. The much-vaunted improvement in their lives turns into something more akin to slavery, disguised as a job. But you might be wondering why don't they just leave? 
Most of them lose their rights the moment they set foot in the United Arab Emirates. As soon as they arrive, their employers confiscate their passports and send them straight to Sonapur, where they are virtually isolated. And to make matters worse, local legislation is not on the side of immigrants. Dubai may have one of the lowest unemployment rates in the world, around 0.05%, but this hides a complicated reality. Those who lose their jobs have just 30 days to find a new occupation or they will be deported. In other words, for many, taking any job that comes along is the only way to keep going. And so these workers end up trapped in a cycle where they live with countless restrictions, saving the bare minimum to send some money to their families when they can. Most live in extreme need, struggling even to cover basic expenses. Want an example? The salary of a cleaner in Dubai is around 800 dirhams a month, approximately $200. Of this amount, he sends more than half to his family and uses the rest to support himself. It may seem like an acceptable salary when compared to the minimum in some countries, but we mustn't forget that the cost of living in Dubai is very high. To give you an idea, the rent for a small studio apartment, as one-piece apartments are called, varies between 1,500 and 4,000 dirhams. Can you imagine trying to live on such a tight salary in a place where everything costs so much? The solution is to share. On average, each worker shares a room with five other people in order to save as much as possible and guarantee the basics. Food, clothing, and transportation. These workers' days are long and exhausting. Often, the men who work in Sonapur don't even have the minimum conditions to maintain their hygiene. The accommodation for migrant workers in Dubai, known as work camps or labor camps, often has precarious conditions. In these places, it is common for several workers to share small rooms with capacity for up to 10 or 15 people in spaces of around 10 square meters. The sanitary facilities are usually communal, with toilets and showers shared by a large number of residents, often in an inadequate state of repair. There is almost no shower. The solution for many is to use a bucket. The kitchen is communal, visibly dirty and totally out of line with the quality standards of other countries, with several workers crowded into spaces that are normally built by themselves. The most frightening thing is that even the pipes and ventilation spaces were built by the workers, without supervision by the responsible bodies. Although many of these accommodations offer air conditioning due to the high temperatures in the region, maintenance is not always adequate, affecting the workers' quality of life. In other words, it's almost inhumane. And so the salaries, which at first seemed like a promise for the future, turn out to be insufficient to cover expenses and send money home. The expectation of prosperity turns into a struggle to simply survive. Many of these immigrants end up getting into debt and living in a cycle of poverty and exhaustion, where the hope of a fresh start becomes more and more distant. Can you understand now why they won't leave? How can you leave with no passport, no money, and tied up in debt? Not to mention the fact that many of these workers don't get paid. It's not hard to find workers with signs begging their employer to pay them what they owe so they can go home. And it is in this scenario, bleak in itself, that even more disturbing events arise. Imagine spending years away from your family in a place where the distance is not just physical, but emotional. These workers arrive with dreams and energy, but as time goes by, the promise of a better life in Dubai turns into a crushing routine that consumes body and spirit. They work without rest, without seeing the end of a journey that drags on and on, while the opulence of the city shines in the distance, untouched. And it's not just the physical exhaustion. The mental battle is brutal. The loneliness is constant the emptiness immense. 
many end up falling into a state of apathy in which every day seems the same, without color, without hope. That Dubai glow, which once represented a new beginning, is now a dense, suffocating shadow. For some, the weight becomes so unbearable that life itself loses its meaning. While they survive on the bare minimum, luxury in Dubai reaches unimaginable levels. Gold-plated cars, ostentatious mansions, products that seem straight out of a fairy tale. And yes, this is possible in the United Arab Emirates. They have their own minds, an abundance of wealth so absurd that part of the population seems oblivious to the human price that sustains this greatness. And if you're thinking of visiting Dubai, here's a warning. The areas where these workers live are considered risk zones. Avoid them, even because it is forbidden by the local authorities. For obvious reasons, the misery, abandonment, and brutal reality of these communities don't match the city's luxurious image. Anyone looking at Dubai from the outside sees a modern paradise where everything seems possible. But this image is carefully constructed. The five-star hotels, award-winning restaurants, and exclusive events tell only a fraction of the story. The truth is that, behind the glitter, there is a system that exploits the most vulnerable, turning workers into cogs in a machine that never stops. While tourists return home with memories of an enchanting city, migrant workers carry the weight of a life sacrificed for a dream that was never theirs. Sonapur is a silent, dark reminder that the luxury of a few is built on the sacrifice of many. But will this story one day be part of Dubai's narrative? Or will it remain in the shadows as the city grows, hiding the faces of those who build it? Comment here with your thoughts on the reality of Dubai. If you like this content, please like it, share it, and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video. To those of you who have watched us so far, thank you very much and we'll see you in the next episode of our Bello Mundo adventure.